here we are, in Japan. I've dreamt of coming here for quite a long time now. Everything I've seen about it has made me want to come here. The scenery, the culture, the people. The cities look really, really interesting to explore and the nature and the climbing looks incredible. I've seen loads of videos of a lot of my favourite climbers visiting Japan and doing really cool looking boulder problems and yeah, I've, I've wanted an opportunity to come out here for, for years now, so I'm feeling very lucky that we finally made it. On the first day, we spent a good few hours getting lost on the subway. It's only taken us about 20 minutes to work out how to buy a ticket. <laughs> it's, going, it's going well. Well, I thought that being a Londoner with the tubes and stuff, it wouldn't be that hard to work out travelling around Tokyo, but surprise! No, it is, it is quite difficult. <laughs> All the stations have loads going on there. It's a bit of a sensory overload. Each train seems to have a different tune that it plays whenever it rolls into the station, which was nice. A very musical transport network. But whatever we did, everyone was super friendly and really helpful, very patient with our buffoonery. Okay, I'll use my London multi tool to get us there. Seems like it should be easy, but guess again, because <laughs> we're in charge. After finally figuring out the subway system, we made our way over to B Pump Ogikubo for a climbing session with Taki. And what a cool gym! They had a really, really nice set of walls. They've got an awesome set of holds. And really good routes with them. Very luckily, Dave has a huge amount of contacts out in Japan. A lovely fellow named Taki was nice enough to, although he's never met us and had only spoken to Dave a little bit, he came and met us right at the airport. The entire top circuit, I didn't really bother trying many of the others, they were way above my level. Got plenty of the second hardest circuits and really, really had a good time on the comp wall. The comp wall's cool. I managed to get some of the comp wall problems quite easily, some of them a bit harder. There was one in particular, this black sort of off-width climb. I, I really wanted to get it and it took me ages and maybe like a hundred tries. Just killed myself working at it for about two hours.
I did them all. It was totally worth it. Was kind of a sign of things to come. Everyone is super strong out here. Literally the hardest climb I've ever done. <laughs> We had a fantastic time. We climbed a bit with Taki, and once we had been there for a good six hours or something ridiculous, went off and explored Tokyo for a bit. We stayed in Tokyo for a couple of days, two, three days, I think. Transport's really good, not that expensive. Once we got the hang of it, actually not that hard. It made total sense. But to get to the bouldering areas we wanted to try out, which was Ogawayama and Mitsugaki, Definitely recommend getting a rental car. Not sure how you get from the train station to the bouldering area. You need a car. There's no other way of doing it. We left Tokyo a couple of hours ago and we're on our way to Ogoyama. This is Takeyuki. He's a hero. Oh, thank you. Uh, we met Taki about three, three days ago. Three days ago. Yeah. When did you start climbing? That's a, like, a Five years. That's all. Yeah. And you do V9? Yeah. I'm <laughs> We're all really strong. <laughs> That's true. We weren't really sure what we were going to find when we got there because it was super dark, super misty, and so very, very, very pleasantly surprised that it's gorgeous. So we spent a good week going out bouldering every day. We met so airport first time. Well, wow, you guys are so nice. But it looks so tired, sleepy. You gave us a good offer. Please join us to Ogawayama Mizugaki Please session. First time I, I saw it, I couldn't. But we, we talking about long time, but okay, I changed my mind. Okay, just let's go. <laughs> we're walking around looking for borders. And ah, what? Um, we found the one we were looking for, but it's a bit wet. So, maybe we'll try it. Maybe it's dry enough. First time I saw he climbing, I don't understand. He's so strong. He's so, I think he's really an outside climber, because three attempt or four attempt, it's gone, it's gone. Really so nice. First border we went to was this cool traverse, but it was it was quite wet, and I slipped off and landed on my ass about four times, and then found there was like a V7 variation, there was a dyno variation. Nice warm up for the day.
The area of Ogawama is beautiful. You're surrounded on all sides by rocky outcrops. You're in the middle of the forest. There's streams running past. It feels very like in the middle of nature, in the middle of nowhere. So we hiked up the hill, was shown an area quite technical and all very hard boulder problems. I think the easiest there was V11. But I, I got to work on this powerful at first and then really sketchy technical mantle problem, but didn't get that close on day one. But we tried it a bit. I, I worked out some good beta for it. Come on. Come on. No! Oh, oh man! <laughs> oh, I had the heel on really badly. I was like, oh, it's still on. I'll keep going. And then I just got completely lost. Was I going the wrong way? Oh, man. <laughs> no, <Nasty. laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> oh, I'm done. Yeah. It's really good to meet you. No, not at all. It's really good. <laughs> and nice to meet you too, Lisa. <laughs> and um, an honour. It's really, really cool to watch. <laughs> we woke up the next day and we set off ourselves to Mitsugaki for a day of bouldering. We went straight over to a boulder that had a, a set of really cool pocket climbs on it.
<laughs> I like it. It's my, my sort of climb. I got on this other V7. I, I can't tell if I was doing the right beta or not. Anywhere other than Japan, I think if you're locking off a mono at about knee height, you're probably doing something wrong if it's supposed to be V7. But no, there are some hard climbs out here, so I, I carried on just pulling really, really hard on it, reaching up higher and higher and higher. Not this hard, break my finger. Until I suddenly started panicking and realised, ah, my finger is stuck, feeling my forearm starting to go a bit numb and feeling a bit weird. Fuck! Oh. Ah. I chilled out and rested for about half an hour, 40 minutes or so. It felt okay, so I tried to climb on the other side of the boulder, which starts with... At first, like, I couldn't believe it gets V7. It was just horrible. try those and try the really famous boulders. Finished that boulder, was quite happy, finger was feeling a bit weird but not painful, it was okay. So Tetsui right. advised that we go up the hill and try this other bouldering area where there was a classic called Ashura. Oh. Okay, yeah we should find that, it looks really good. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> whole hand went completely numb and I realised, no, this is stupid, I, I might have really hurt it now. I was starting to get a bit annoyed with myself because I realised, uh, you might have actually injured it and you should have paid attention and instead you carried on climbing. Yeah, I've definitely cracked it a bit. What, forearm or finger? Tendon and pulley. Hurts here and here and there. So, yeah, <laughs> chucked my chalk bag around, threw a bit of a strop, and then we, we called it in for the day. Sadly, this was our last day climbing with Taki. We wrapped up with our bouldering, and we took him back to the station, and we said our tearful goodbyes. So happy, I'm so happy. I'm pretty, well, I'm sad that you're leaving, man. It's Sam. Um... I don't know what we're gonna do without you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh! <laughs> no, wait, 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 come here, man. Thank you. Thank you for everything. No, Thank really. You. Thank you, guys. We miss you. Sayonara, Taki. Sayonara. Oh. Doesn't even look back. Oh, oh. oh that cuts me deep. <laughs> It's a pretty dramatic sort of landscape as Ogawai Ama. It, the weather can change really suddenly. Sometimes it can be like bright sunshine and then five minutes later the clouds roll in over the hills. It starts raining really heavily. There was one night where it, it was like pelting it down with rain all night. Um, we assumed, okay, well climbing's done for the week then. And then we got up in the morning and magically bright sunshine again. I was feeling pretty anxious about my finger. It was feeling really stiff. My hand was a bit numb. It didn't feel great. We didn't have much else to do, so I thought, okay, I'll do some I'll do some really light climbing. I'll tape it up. So I got on a Chris Sharma problem called Two Monks.
So I did notice okay. that I was managing to do some quite hard climbs and so tried to explain what ape index is. I think even if I did speak Japanese, I wasn't explaining it very well. <laughs> How do I explain this? Okay, um, in English we have wor the word ape index. Um, for arms the same as height. Make sense? No. Hmm? No, I don't <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. After a few hours of climbing, it was feeling almost completely better. So we went up the hill and tried the sort of powerful and technical mantle that I'd had a go at a few days ago. <laughs> the most panicky top out ever. Oh, I think that's the worst anyone's ever, ever climbed on it and still done it. <laughs> <laughs> I was off it like five times. Uh, this is what happens if you fall off at the wrong moment. <laughs> oh, I really didn't want to fall off it again like I did before, and I pushed it so close. <laughs> Oh, I had no right finishing it that time. <laughs> Let's watch it. <laughs> Round two. This time with tape. Which annoyingly I had on me last time. I don't know what I was doing. But today it's feeling good. And I've been smart enough to put tape on. Let's get to it. <laughs> I tried to blow it off and it landed on my fucking chalk bag. Right, well he's gone. Now I can climb. No! Close. <laughs> okay. Oh, it makes my finger go numb. It's been hard. Not hard? No hard. Oh, okay, good. Very good spot. <laughs> yeah, this is wet, so I can't stand on it. I'm just going for a weird toe jam. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, thank you, Taka. Very good advice. I don't think we've done any climbs, which I'd say are my style. It's raining. I'm not really getting very far. I'm making progress a bit. My skin does look a bit shit. Nice little zombie hands. Oh, oh it is good. 
God damn it. Let me try go for the mono once more. Because it's not that mono, it's that mono. That's okay. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. It's not perfect conditions, so um, we tried our best. I don't think it's going to happen today. So I think that's us done here. I know, quite excited. It feels like a bit of an anticlimax for the last day. Maybe we'll come out with a load of flamethrowers later and, <laughs> and dry it off. <laughs> Being out in the middle of nowhere at the guest house in Ogoyama felt just peaceful and refreshing. Leaving Ogawayama and going back to Tokyo, Come on, then. it felt like a bit of a shock to the system at first. It was having been out in the nature for a week. It, it, we, we were a bit sad to be out of the beautiful bouldering area, but we dropped the car, got on the bullet train. It was about half the price that keeping the car would have been, and we were there in two hours rather than twelve hours. When we arrived in Kyoto, we had pretty loose plans. It's really cool seeing the mix of very traditional Japanese culture alongside the more modernly built structures. It was, it was really nice that we, uh, we got a chance to explore a little bit. But we'd been told by like five other people that we'd met that we should get in touch with a guy called Tak, who runs Crux Kyoto. It's a really cool sort of underground training sort of vibe, sort of like a secret basement sort of climbing center. Hard climbs, as expected. Um, found one V7 that I couldn't start for ages until the root setter came over and pointed out what you were supposed to do, with me sort of listening going, doesn't sound very likely, and then tried it, and hey, it worked. <laughs> Tak recommended that we should go and check out a bouldering area called Kasagi. It was supposed to be really hot the next day and really difficult to get to by public transport and I was wrecked. Like It had been two weeks of climbing every day. I don't know how I still had skin. I then stupidly spent like six hours climbing at Crux and trying loads of hard climbs. So I was even more tired. But then he mentioned that Yuji Hirayama might be there. We had been trying to run into him all trip. So we're like, okay, it's our last chance. Let's just, let's just go to Kasagi. Whether he's there or not, we'll find something to climb. Tak helped us work out the transport. And actually, it's not as bad as we thought. As we started getting closer to Kasagi, I was starting to worry that maybe we had gone to the wrong location because you get the train to way outside Kyoto, you arrive in this sleepy little village and you walk all the way through it, you get to the riverbank and even as we got, we were starting to get pretty close, I was thinking I can't see any boulders at this, uh, there's a big campsite so maybe that's a good sign but you keep on walking down the riverbed then suddenly, ta-da, really cool bouldering area. Fun time climbing, managed a really, really fun, again, the V7 classic of the crag where I'd been told by Tack, oh yeah, you have to use like three thumb press moves in a row. And I was listening to it going, I'm going to lank my way past that. There's no way I'm doing that. And no, sure enough, yeah, it's completely forced. You do three thumb press moves and, uh, and then you do a bit of normal climbing. Really cool boulder. Really, really fun. Loved it.
so I got my bouldering done for the day and then thought, okay, it's it's time. I'm going to miss my opportunity. I'd kick myself if I found out that Yuji had left and I didn't get to go over and say hi. And so I went for it. Oh, he's, he's really busy, though. No, look, he's busy, man. We can't. No, I won't go. I won't go. I'll go later, maybe. Later, later, later. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He's really nice. Oh, that's made the trip for me. We've been kind of running into or oh, almost missing him like for the last two weeks. Like we got to Tokyo and we went to B Pump and he was over at base camp instead. I so badly want that high five. <laughs> Meeting Yuji was a huge personal highlight for me. I didn't really think it was going to happen. It made me so deeply happy. I don't know why, it, I just, it, it really meant a lot to me. But the whole two weeks there was just spectacular. We climbed in some beautiful places. We met some really cool people. Everyone we met was really keen to help us out and just hang out and be friendly and chat about stuff. We had delicious food and climbed some awesome problems it was just i can't recommend it enough i loved it there i felt like i progressed a bit as a climber while i was out there mostly because nothing felt like it was my style there was no just yarding between good edges on an overhang it was all weird technical stuff on pockets and vertical walls and i i learned a bit about just how amazing people can be how happy they are just to hang out with someone new and get to know each other and share experiences together. It was it was quite hard to leave Japan. We've uh, supposedly it was two weeks, but I don't know, man. It's just shot by. It felt like we arrived in Tokyo like uh, yesterday, and apparently now we've got to leave. But I'm really hoping to come back here again. Sayonara, Japan. agree to be filmed. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>